particular groups to consult with. I call the Honourable Jenny Salisa. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker, for this opportunity. And I'd like to acknowledge Jan Tanetti for working on this bill and bringing it to the House. I'd also like to acknowledge and thank the Select Committee for hearing all of the submissions that have been put through. Um, Madam Speaker, I would like to talk about Clause 4 and where it states that the Minister must consult with national bodies representing the interests of Pacific Education organisations. My question um, to the member and the chair is, as you're consulting with these Pacific organisations, would you also consider organisations who are uh, Pacific, serving Pacific children and Pacific students who may not be members of a national body? Say, for instance, we have had quite a few thousand uh, Samoans, Tongans and other ethnic groups who have moved to regional areas in Aotearoa recently, over the last one to five <coughs> years or so. They are providing some educational um, services, but they, uh, as far as I know, because we have been out there, both myself and the Honourable Minister for Pacific Peoples Consulting uh, in these areas in the last few months, uh, we have not found all of them to be members of uh, national bodies, Madam Speaker. So as you are doing uh, and finalising this, this bill, that is my question to you on the chair, could we ensure that we are going to be inclusive of those Pacific organisations. I, like many members uh, who have spoken on this bill uh, before me, uh, would like to commend uh, you as well as uh, all of those who have made submissions, including the Children's Commissioner, who stated that it is so important to ensure that we consult with and listen to our children. You know, one of the things that I was actually quite surprised by as I went uh, consulting on education, actually, with Pacific as well as ethnic communities and uh, parents actually brought their children, I was quite surprised that we had children as young as four and five, some as young as 10, not only come and actually give us what their uh, opinions are of education right now as they experience it, but they were brave enough, Madam Chair, to actually, at the end of these consultations, get up in front of, in some cases, a few hundreds of us and tell us exactly what they would like to see the education system today. And also, one of the questions was, what would you like to do if you were the boss of education? How would you ensure that the education system you experience, that when you go to schools, what would you do to ensure that it is an education fit for you as a child? I tell you, some of those conversations that we heard from these children were just breathtaking. Uh, you know, we heard from an 11-year-old child in Porirua who told us exactly what it would be like if she was the minister. Uh, another child who was 10 telling us exactly what she would like to do if she was the, the, the Secretary of Education. So hearing from the voices of our children is absolutely important. And I know, Madam uh, Chair, uh, that being a teacher and having been a principal for so many years, you know exactly what I'm talking about because children are very honest and they do give you their honest opinion about things, uh, Madam Chair. So I would like to, to quote one of the things that the um, Children's Commissioner, Judge Andrew uh, P. Beecroft, said at the hearing. He said, and I quote, hearing from and incorporating the views of children and young people deliver better and more robust decisions. We support the intention to create a more equitable system that supports children to develop to their full potential and that ensures our children and young people deliver better and more robust decisions. And uh, Madam Chair, other submitters were, you know, really in agreement with, with Judge Brett Beecroft. Uh, Madam Chair, another um, a group that I'm so glad to see that the Minister must consult with is national bodies with a particular role in respect of the character of designated character schools. Now, Madam Chair, we know that we have hundreds and hundreds of designated character schools right throughout Aotearoa. So it is absolutely important that we hear from them, that we hear from them directly what it is that they provide, what it is that they would like the Minister of Education to address, and as we firm up and finalise the NALP uh, moving forward, Madam Chair. Thank you so much for this opportunity.
Um, I call Willow Jean Prime. Aitemangai o te whare tēnā koe.